let's get started. Um, thank you um, very much for joining on time this morning. Uh, please do let me know um, if you can hear us, um, or if there's any issues um, with the audio, use the, um, use the chat window uh, if you're not able to, um, to hear us properly um, and let us know. But, um, as you as you'll have seen uh, in the last week or so, we at Coldweb we've announced um, our new channel business Fusion, uh, and we want to take the time to walk our existing partners through that, give you a bit of background for that, uh, and give you a chance to ask a few questions um, around what this means for yourselves and uh, and how we can uh, work better work together uh, within this new model. My name is, is Michael Frisby. Um, I'm the new managing director at, at Cobo and at Fusion. Um, I've spent uh, five years previously as Cobo sales and marketing director uh, in the early 2000s. And then I've spent the last eight years uh, before coming back to Cobo last month uh, in Microsoft, um, running their operator cloud business uh, across Western Europe for five of those years. Uh, and the last year I was spent working with all of the SMB managed resellers um, across Western Europe, helping them move uh, to the cloud and accelerate um, their transformation into Office 365 and EMS and, and the other portfolio of, of Microsoft cloud services. And, and the opportunity that we had um, with Cobweb and becoming a two-tier CSP uh, and being able to work with all of our existing uh, channel resellers who have been selling our hosted exchange and Cobweb hosted services uh, for many years to be able to also then expand that into the, the broader portfolio of, of Microsoft Cloud Services and then future on-premise solutions um, was just too exciting for me to uh, to say no to. So that's why I'm here. I think there's a, there's a huge opportunity for everybody uh, as we move to the cloud um, and, uh, and hence the reason why we've created Fusion. So on, in, in today's presentation, I want to give you a um, very quick overview of, of why Fusion, uh, what is Fusion, uh, and how we set up uh, Fusion partnerships and talk about some of the, the next steps um, as to how we move forward. So when we think about why Fusion um, came from a, a, a starting point of really cloud services are changing uh, the way people can do business. It's democratizing IT and making systems and solutions that were only previously ever available for the largest enterprises available to absolutely any size of business, whether it's a one person, 10 person, 50 person business. Um, and it's enabling smaller businesses to work in much smarter and more effective ways. And, and that makes the world a lot easier for, for many businesses um, in terms of making it easy for people to be able to collaborate together, uh, be able to work from anywhere, uh, uh, and just help people get more done um, and, and work be something that people do rather than the place that they go to. But from a, um, what I've seen over many years and what we, we know from ourselves here as Cobweb is the move to the cloud actually makes it a lot harder for, for IT resellers and IT service providers. And we go from delivering sort of single point solutions being very much focused around the transaction model, uh, where we've worked with, with Microsoft for many years around having a, uh, you typically sell a license and that would have a two or three year term to it and that becomes a very transactional um, approach. We need to engage with customers in a different way because so you don't have that renewal point um, anymore where we need to be able to go, where we have a point in time where we need to go back and talk to customers. We need to build an ongoing customer uh, relationship and, and be in much closer dialogue um, with our customers and providing value um, every day, every week, every month um, to them. And I think as cloud services deliver more and more, no one partner can hope to understand everything um, that's in there. I, whenever I'm with Microsoft, I, I still challenge them to, to have somebody come and explain to me in depth what every bit of E5 means. Um, within Office 365, and that's just one SKU within one particular service from Microsoft. Uh, and when you start to think about customers taking 
um, Office 365, CRM, a HR application, a payroll application. As individual providers, it's very difficult for us to understand fully uh, the whole breadth of all of those services. Um, so we increasingly need to work with others to deliver complete solutions for our customers. And as we and as more of those solutions get delivered from the cloud, we as, as providers to customers, we have to look at where is our value. Our value no more is in being able to go in, install the servers, run the, uh, keep those up to date. Uh, and it's about helping, for me, it's very much around helping customers unlock the value from the cloud services. And the way we provide value to customers needs to change. And as I say, we, from a, from a cobweb perspective, we've been there and, and, and we, we, we started off live 20 years ago. And, and what we're going to do is take that experience now and help uh, our partners through the new Vision uh, channel engine um, to, to take advantage um, of the cloud services. Cobweb, as I just mentioned, we've been going for, for 20 years. It started off uh, in November 96 and started off doing connectivity, web hosting. Um, it was late 99 uh, when I was in, in Microsoft UK for the first time when I first started working with Paul and Julian um, around host exchange. We did uh, partnerships with NTL Telewest. Um, at the time, been very successful building out that model um, over the years. We are the UK's largest um, hosted exchange provider. We've got over 150,000 users um, on our hosted exchange platform today. And 50% of those seats come from our channel partners today. So Cobweb is already very, has already been very much a channel-focused um, business. Uh, and our, our, our plan moving forward is to, is to become even more so. Just over uh, a year ago, we became a one-tier CSP. Uh, we wanted to become a two-tier. Um, we've only got the one-tier status from Microsoft at that point, um, enabling us to resell on ourselves um, Microsoft's portfolio um, of cloud services, Office 365, EMS, Azure, Power BI, uh, and others as they come along. And we were the first partner worldwide um, also, first partner in the UK to transact um, Office 365 through through the CSP APIs with uh, with Odin. Um, so we've always tried to be at that leading edge uh, of what we do. And, and then back in November, we became at what Microsoft called a two-tier CSP. Uh, we effectively become a distributor of, of Microsoft cloud services, which enables us to allow our partners, our channel partners, yourselves to resell those services through to your customers as well. Um, and we're very excited uh, around that. And, and that starts to give new capabilities, particularly around services like Azure, which I think is gonna be a much bigger revenue opportunity uh, for all of us than, than even Office 365, is, which, is, which is a very big um, operator, a very big opportunity. So when I, when I look at Cobweb, there's, there are three parts to our business. We are a service provider. We run and manage services out of data centers. And I'll say we are the largest social exchange provider um, in the UK and one of the, and one of the very largest in, in Europe. So we have that deep expertise of how to run and, and deliver cloud services. And we are a cloud reseller. We have been reselling cloud services uh, for the best part of, of 20 years now. Um, and we want to be able to take that learnings and package that up and share that uh, in a much more uh, dynamic way with, with our channel partners. And, and increasingly over the last two or three years, Cobweb has become a cloud aggregator, bringing in, not selling not just its own um, cloud services out of our own data center, but pulling in solutions like Global Relay, like Mimecast, like Sirius, um, and enabling our partners to be able to sell those bundles of solutions um, around, say, email security as opposed to just the um, host of exchange mailbox. And for me, Fusion is very much around how we can work together to help you make your business future proof as more and more cloud services uh, get delivered and, and work together 
to help make sure we're delivering lots of value um, into customers. And so Fusion um, is our new cloud aggregator business. It's a 100% channel focused organization. We're very much building on that 20 years of experience that we have of delivering and selling cloud services. Uh, um, we've got a, a, a rich portfolio today and we're going to continue to build that out uh, and add more and more solutions in there, uh, both in different uh, solution areas. So things like HR, payroll, uh, accountancy, ERP, uh, as well as building on some of the existing productivity uh, and security areas that we've already got. Um, with some of the Microsoft solutions and things like Mimecast and, and Global Relay. But one of the, the key principles for me is, as I touched on, is, is the cloud solutions become more comprehensive and partners uh, can't, no one partner can hope to understand every piece about every solution that's being delivered to a customer. We need to work collectively more together as partners to deliver that complete solution to customers. So a big part of Fusion is going to be around enabling partners to work together um, to deliver solutions and to start to resell each other's own expertise and specializations to deliver those complete solutions out into customers. Um, and we don't, we don't just want to be an engine through which you can come and transact um, cloud services. There are uh, there are companies out there today, the, the tech data, the Ingrams, who are very good at doing that transactional piece. We want to be much more than that. We want to be enable you truly to become a complete cloud solution provider, able to offer a whole range of solutions, identify other partners to work with, and be able to wrap your own value um, around those services to deliver complete solutions into the customers. And how we're going to go about doing that is, is around three pillars. Uh, so there's really three core pillars that we have within Fusion. First is our platform. Uh, we have a number of elements around that in terms of the marketplace in which you're able to select which services you want to offer out to your customers at, at the total portfolio that we have. We have the billing capabilities where we're able to bill you or, or to work with you to bill your customers on your behalf. We obviously provide the 24 by 7 support to you today. Uh, we have, have the ability to take that out and offer that to uh, if you to offer 24 by 7 support for your customers as well. The ecosystem piece is a combination of, of those cloud services, packaging up Cobweb's professional services expertise around how do we do um, email migrations, how do we help move, lift and shift uh, customers' servers from on-premise into Azure and, and things like IBM software. But as I say, importantly, enabling partners to really be able to connect together to, um, to deliver a complete solution into, into our customers. And the final piece, which I think is, is something that is, is very different to what I see um, other two tier CSP providers and cloud aggregators or distributors providing in the market is really trying to help you build long-term business success. Um, one, of the, one of the things I've seen in my years at Microsoft is every single partner wants more help in identifying how to go and recruit new customers. And Microsoft are very focused, as I'm sure you're aware, with their short step program and making sure all of our all of their cloud partners get to optimize and be doing two or three cloud deals every month so that everybody's really good at selling cloud um, into the customers. But when you talk to most partners, the, and we had, we had an event in London on Tuesday and, and the, the answer came back the same there, was the most common way of finding new customers today is still referrals. Um, that word of mouth, uh, one customer telling the next customer, um, there. So when we think about the cloud, and just take some examples with Microsoft, Office 365 is used by about 10% of small businesses within the UK today. There's a massive opportunity 
out there still, but once customers have moved to the cloud and those services are evergreen, it's those customers are much less likely to move to a new service or a new provider in the future. So going out there and acquire the customer relationships we acquire today are the basis upon which we're all going to build our long-term recurring revenues moving into the future. And as I touched on, I think it's not just about acquiring those new customers, but building that long-term customer relationship to help us all drive customer lifetime value. Um, not, there aren't these renewal points in time anymore where we can go back to the customer and say, and, and say right, your, your contract's up for renewal, um, but what do you need now? We need to be building up, start to build that ongoing dialogue and communication through things like customer lifecycle management, um, helping into your customer might buy exchange today, but then you can buy, help, uh, help them see why they might need to buy Office 365, um, and some of the benefits around EMS in terms of protecting their information uh, once it's within the cloud services, enabling their customers to be more agile while being secure. Um, and then maybe adding Power BI on to get greater insights and move some of the um, more traditional on-premise workloads like finance or HR into the cloud as well. And we need to be able to do that in a structured way through uh, using marketing automation, nurturing technologies, social. Uh, and our goal here is to build out and leverage some of the technologies we've been investing in in Cobweb for the last couple of years around things like CRM, Acton for marketing automation, um, some of the social uh, capabilities we've been building, and passing those through to all of our partners to help you go and acquire uh, more customers. We're going to be packaging up some of the things we've learned around how to drive some of those things with campaigns, campaigns in a box, uh, and we're also going to be building out lead uh, capabilities there. So digging into each of those um, pieces into a little bit more detail, um, let's say from a marketplace, um, the view marketplace today is built on top of Odin, and as a partner, you're able, you're able to select from the breadth of um, solutions and services that we have uh, within that portfolio. Um, I think one of the things that differentiates um, Fusion from, from some of the other the cloud aggregators out there is if you're already a Microsoft One Tier CSP or want to be, that we, we still want to work with you. Uh, we're very happy to plug your Microsoft One Tier CSP billing ID into our Odin platform Microsoft will send you a bill for all of the Office 365 uh, services you purchase, but you still get access to all of the other cloud services that are in the portfolio without you having to go and build those one-to-one -one relationships with vendors uh, to get them into, into your marketplace. So you just have a lot of flexibility around that. And from a Microsoft perspective, whether you transact um, directly with them as a one-tier or through a two-tier partner such as uh, Cobweb and Fusion, you you maintain the same status, so they absolutely see all the partner of records, whether you're an optimized partner, your status within uh, MPN and the accreditations, all of those benefits still accrue regardless of which model um, you're using to resell. Um, billing as a service, um, so we, cloud, cloud services today have been relatively simple to build, on a, typically on a per user, per month model but with things like Azure and consumption-based services uh, becoming more prevalent, the significant complexities uh, around that. Um, Mark Lawton from Microsoft, uh, who, who's our uh, partner relationship person, uh, was, at, was at the event with us on Tuesday. He said there's over 2,800 SKUs in Azure, which can all be billed by the hour. Uh, so there's massive complexities um, around how we can bill as a service um, in the future. And that's both to you, giving you that unified bill, but also being able to take that capability out to your customers. And on the support perspective, we provide that 24 by 7 uh, UK-based support for you today. And, and if you want to, we can extend that capability out to your customers. Uh, and obviously, obviously, some of those things we all know delivering support um, provides a uh, it comes with a charge, that will be on a per user per month uh, model for you uh, that you can opt in or out on uh, as you as you desire. 
I want to, to dig into billing as a service um, a little bit more and, and explain some of the things we're doing um, around that to enable you to take that out uh, and, and build your custom build customers on your behalf. Um, so we've been doing this for about 10 years um, as Cobweb uh, through partnerships with people like NGL Telewest and uh, now Virgin Media, where we're billing their customers for some of the cloud services that they take. And we, um, through our billing as a bureau service, um, we send a completely branded bill out to the customer, notifying them of what the charges are. 14 days later, money is then taken out of the customer's account. Virgin Media's name is what appears on their bank statement, and we put the money into Virgin Media's account, and then we invoice um, Virgin Media, and, uh, and they pay us by direct debit. What we've also got the capability to do this, and we have some of our other resellers already doing this, they put in their additional services into our billing platform, and they can build, send one bill out to the customer in an automated way and have everything collected on, uh, on direct debit. And we're expend extending um, that out now, and we're making that available more broadly for all of our partners. We've uh, done the financials with our banks where we can en enable to offer this service for a 1% fee, both for services uh, that you purchased through Cobweb, or, or through Fusion rather, or services that you're providing outside of that Fusion relationship into your customers, put it all onto one bill, our billing platforms would send your customer uh, the invoice, then collect the monies into your account with your name appearing on, on their bank statement, and that's 1% with a thousand pounds per month cap. Um, so, um, the, and that, that's cumulative across all of your customers. Um, so, if you're billing, uh, and if you're billing over a hundred thousand pounds a month to your customers, it's a thousand pounds a month is the maximum you would pay for that billing bureau service, where we'd be billing your customers, putting the money into your account, uh, and doing it all through a, a completely white labelled um, solutions. If you wanted to bill through credit cards, the fees are slightly higher based on credit card type or, or the gateway uh, being used. But from a, today at Cobweb, over 98% of all of our revenues are collected by direct debit. Um, so if you're interested in, in that as a solution, please please do let us know and, and talk with your, your channel business manager um, around that. On to uh, the smart ecosystem side, I say we've got the portfolio of, of services today. Um, that's ever growing and we're going to accelerate the pace uh, at which we add new services into the portfolio. Um, on the professional services side, uh, the team has been doing a lot of work to package up the offerings. I know some of you today um, already resell some of our professional services, uh, but we'll be packaging up a lot more of those into discrete components to help you um, to, to get to value more quickly. Uh, with the customers, make sure the customers are deployed. And again, we can do that in a, in a white label fashion for you as needed. I think the big thing is, is the way we're going to try and enable partner to partner connections, setting up uh, social groups, using things like Yammer to enable you to find each other, for you to expose your services through uh, the marketplace as well, so other partners can find your services uh, and include them into, into their offerings out into the customers in, in an automated way. Um, and I think it's very much all of us in the ecosystem working together that can deliver uh, the most value out into customers. I want to touch on specifically around Azure um, in the first instance um, around that smart ecosystem. I think we're all very familiar with um, the existing portfolio cobweb um, delivered services uh, so host exchange and the SharePoint and some of the, the infrastructure service pieces we do they're all available through the marketplace along with say the solutions from uh, Microsoft and people like Mimecast and Global Relay and, and, and IBM uh, but Azure is I think the really big next opportunity um, for all of us if we think about all of those workloads that are sitting on 
servers in a corner in an office somewhere, and the ability to move those into the cloud, the, the revenue potential uh, through Azure uh, is, is absolutely phenomenal. And I was out in the US uh, a couple of weeks ago with June, and we were demonstrating to the Azure product team how we packaged up Azure within our Odin marketplace to enable partners to transact and, uh, and sell that today. Um, and they had lots of questions from us on how they can work with us to help make that an easier and better experience because it is, it's not the simplest experience. They would, you know, 2,800 SKUs, there's a level of complexity um, around that. So we would, one of our key focuses is to work with partners, give you sample templates and packagings and, and sort of uh, templates to make it easy for you to go out there uh, and to sell as your across all of those things. So you don't have to worry about the, the 2,800 different SKUs. So we're going to leverage um, our experience around having delivered um, sort of infrastructure service type solutions uh, for many years. And how can you take some of those solutions you may all deliver today and put them on top of Azure, whether that's um, around infrastructure service offering. So what, what would a particular, you need a, a four server installation to run a particular line of business application, what does that look like in Azure? What's the example price going to be um, for that in Azure? Web hosting, if, you, if you've got customers who want to run uh, WordPress, uh, as an example, how do you configure WordPress within an Azure environment? How do you add in things like the content uh, delivery network component? How do you add in the firewalls into there to make sure you're delivering um, a true solution on top of Azure as opposed to having to worry about picking which bits out there. We're working with a partner in the US right now around host a desktop. We're planning to bring that into the portfolio um, in the near future. Things like remote app to be able to package up some of those more traditional applications, deliver them through a cloud model. Remote app is coming into CSP uh, later this year as well. Backup and DR solutions have, have been a prime example uh, an early usage of uh, Azure today. In the, in the not too distant future, the solutions which are sitting in the Azure marketplace will be purchasable through CSP. So through uh, our existing Odin marketplace, you'll be able to add in um, and purchase for your customers those pre-packaged solutions that already exist in the Azure marketplace and do that in a, in a standard way with everything appearing on one bill. Uh, both for yourselves uh, and for your customers. And there's a very big opportunity right now around SQL as well. There's thousands, about tens of thousands of old SQL servers out there. Uh, a lot of them go end of uh, end of support next Tuesday. I think that is 12th of April is uh, when SQL Server goes, 2005 goes out of support. So um, there's a lot of opportunity there about helping move um, customers um, from their old unsupported on-premise SQL servers into a new cloud world. And to help you with that, as one of the, we're doing some go-to-market activity with Microsoft around this. They've given us some money to help our partners get going and to try Azure. Uh, so we've been able to put together a 100 pound service credit for, for all of the Fusion partners um, to start trying Azure uh, today. So if there's, if you've been thinking about Azure, not, uh, you're not quite sure what you may be able to do, please do reach out to, to your channel business manager, either whether it's Louisa or, or Darren or Craig, connect with them uh, and they'll help you get going uh, to try Azure uh, and to see how you can start to build solutions on top of that. Touch on sort of the, some of the breadth of, um, of the, of the services we've got within the within the portfolio today, but I think very much our goal is around being able to work with you and help turn that sort of bucket of services into solutions that you sell to your customers with your services wrapped around them, your value add. How can we help you work together to how can we work together to help you onboard those customers, get the customer data migrated into the services, and provide a, a combined support wrap which gives your customers uh, what you need and turns those, in, those solutions into uh, solutions which help drive productivity for customers, which give the customers a better web presence, which help them drive better customer 
customer engagement through uh, CRM and things like Power BI to give better insights. And obviously, one of the core things we've always been we've, we've been known for at Cobweb around protection uh, on that productivity side. Moving on to to the third pillar around um, business success, I've, I've touched on some of these pieces already. Um, but the, that customer lifecycle piece is, is really, really uh, important. I'm, I'm one, of, one of the most fascinating stats I, I learned um, in the last couple of years when I was at Microsoft is something about 75% of Microsoft partners use their Office 365 internal use rights. So there's a really great adoption of, uh, of Office 365 and partners using it, and that makes it easier for them to be able to sell. We all know it's easier to sell what we use. When it comes to CRM, less than 4% of all Microsoft partners worldwide use the internal use rights. Um, and I often joke that the most used CRM system today for many companies is still, is still Excel. And I think there's a really big opportunity um, around CRM using the use rights uh, we all have with Microsoft, connecting that in with marketing automation tools, us as Vision helping provide you with content and, uh, and communications that can help you build that customer lifetime value. Um, so driving incremental revenue over time uh, from each of those customers and making sure they're taking value from the services they've already purchased with you as well to make sure they're happy uh, with the existing uh, solutions they have uh, and uh, feel confident to invest uh, in future solutions with you as well. We'll do, um, we have a whole series of standard readiness and enablement programs. Uh, we're enhancing those capabilities as well in terms of uh, online help content and, uh, and, and webinars and activities to help you uh, understand how to best sell uh, and position these services. We have uh, within the team uh, solution specialists who can help you build those solutions, particularly around the more complex solution areas like Azure, uh, help you design the right solution and implement those with with your customers. Uh, and then finally, talk about this, the idea of lead generation, offering out as a service, as, as a chargeable service, where we'll support you with digital marketing, with telemarketing, to help you find more leads uh, and opportunities uh, both within your existing customer base and out into, into the white space and with new customers. An element of, um, of our business success services as well is something we call the profit tuner. Um, I, today, vast about 60% of all Office 365 seats sold into SMB in the UK are sold through the advisor model. Today, the recurring margin on that is 3%. Um, and that and that percentage has got lower over time, and and, and I predict will will continue to reduce over time as Microsoft wants to move partners into other into other licensing models. And so today we we're starting that process of making this this process as simple as possible, where we've built some scripts and uh, to to automate some of those processes, and we're building uh, more of a web wizard front end onto some of those to make it much more click, click, click to move a customer from their advisor subscription into CSP and for you um, as a reseller to, to move from a 3% recurring margin to a 15% margin on the Office 365 piece for all of your subscriptions without having to do a great deal of work, literally just a back-end subscription uh, licensing change for the customer. Um, so again, if you're interested in that, please do Please do let us know. I think there's, you know, Microsoft will be continuing to reduce uh, that margin on Advisor, uh, and you can go from say three percent to fifteen percent today, uh, simply by tr flipping how those customers buy their Office 365 license through you uh, and putting that through CSP um, with us. So if you think about uh, Fusion partnerships and some of the principles. Um, around those, um, very much come from the point of view that 
they're your customers, it's your solutions you're providing, you get to set the prices. And when we think about delivering a solution of the, of the 100 tick boxes a customer might want ticked when they're receiving a solution, you're delivering as much of that value as possible so you can uh, keep as much of and generate as much revenue and profit out of each of those customers. So the, the core principles behind how we look to establish a, a partnership, uh, the partnerships within within Fusion. We have two, effectively two uh, partnership options. We have our cloud reseller in a box option. So whether you're a one tier CSP or, or not, uh, we provide that entire portfolio uh, of cloud services, all the capabilities around billing, support, connecting you uh, with other partners, the business success services. Um, that's the, this is the partnership um, option for, for resellers and systems integrators who want to uh, become that more complete cloud solution provider. We also, uh, to complement that, have um, partnership engagements with ISVs. Um, and so we're building out that portfolio of, of services within the marketplace to enable you to build ever richer uh, solutions for your customers. And ultimately, the, the whole purpose um, around Fusion is to help you make your business as future-proof as possible, to help you build long-term sustainable relationships with your customers where we can all build uh, and increase that customer lifetime value over the over months and years ahead uh, as we can sell more and more services into each of those customers. And that transition can take a long time or by partnering with Fusion, we believe it can take days where we can get you up and running with that enhanced portfolio of services help you start to generate more profit out of your existing customers, help you acquire more customers more quickly, get those customers deployed and using the services uh, much more quickly. That's why we created Fusion, uh, to help you, your partners be successful and to do it over the long term uh, and for all of us to build long-term sustainable relationships uh, and businesses which are future-proof. So in terms of next steps, um, Connect with your existing um, channel business manager. Anybody who's already a Cobweb partner is, is automatically a, a Fusion uh, partner. Um, so that's so that just that continues on. I strongly encourage you to, to work with, with Louisa or Darren or Craig. Build a joint plan on what services would you like to add in your portfolio. Do you want to start looking at moving some of those hosted exchange users into Office three? Six five and be able to add EMS on top of that, or or add CRM into those customers, help those customers get going with CRM, uh, and add be able to add Power BI on top of that to provide real rich visual data insights uh, for customers to so choose which services you want to have uh, and take out through the marketplace into the customers. Do try as your uh, as I say this this huge opportunity for everybody out there. Uh, today with moving that core infrastructure, some of those sort of not non-traditional cloud workloads um, up into the cloud. And then we'll work with you to help you drive that go-to-market plan, provide funding, provide support. Um, at the moment we've got um, opportunities particularly around EMS and Power BI, uh, where we have funding from Microsoft to help drive uh, customer recruitment. So if you've got any opportunities around that, please do share. Um, those with us. Um, that's what I, I wanted to, to present um, today, um, which leaves about 15 minutes or so for, for questions, if anybody, if anybody has any. If you want to, if there's any, if you, in, if you've got any questions, or if you want to type them into the chat window. Uh, 
And I've just muted everybody as well in case anybody wants to, to talk. If, you, if there are any questions, please do um, connect with, uh, say with your channel business manager who will readily help you answer any questions you may have and help you uh, build out a, a bigger portfolio of cloud services that we can uh, sell to our customers uh, and help you drive more profit into the future. But thank you for your time today and look forward to meeting uh, you all over the coming months uh, at different events that will be running. Thank you very much.